Welcome, listeners, to what might be the most honest conversation you'll hear about one of sexuality's most misunderstood phenomena. I'm your host, Zoya Sinclair, and this is Sexual Chemistry, and today we're diving deep into the world of female ejaculation, or as it's more commonly known, squirting. Now, before you think this is just another sensationalized topic, let me tell you why this matters. We're living in an age where sexual wellness is finally getting the attention it deserves, yet female sexuality remains shrouded in myths, misconceptions, and frankly, a lot of bad information. Today, we're going to separate fact from fiction, science from speculation, and give you the real story about what's happening in the female body during these intense sexual experiences, so grab your coffee, settle in, and prepare to have some long-held beliefs challenged. This isn't just about the physical mechanics, It's about understanding the beautiful complexity of female sexual response and why every woman's experience is uniquely her own. Let's start with something that might surprise you. That mysterious G-spot everyone talks about? It's not actually a separate magical button hiding in the vagina. Plot twist. It's part of something much larger and more interconnected than most people realize. Here's the anatomy lesson they probably didn't teach you in health class. What we call the G-spot is actually part of the clitoral network. Yes, you heard that right. The clitoris isn't just that small visible part. It's an entire internal structure that branches around the urethra, extends into the vagina, and sits beneath the labia. Think of it as an iceberg. What you see on the surface is just a tiny fraction of the whole structure. The area we've dubbed the G-spot contains something called the corpus spongiosum a network of spongy erectile tissue that engorges with blood during arousal. This tissue actually serves a protective function, safeguarding the urethra during sexual activity. But here's where it gets interesting. This region is intertwined with the urethra and contains what are called pararethral glands. Dr. Ernst Graffenberg first identified this erogenous area back in 1944, noting its sensitivity along the anterior vaginal wall near the urethra. Dr. Kinsey later observed that while some women noticed enhanced sensitivity in this region, it was often confined to a very specific spot on the upper vaginal wall. But here's the kicker. Since this area is part of the clitoral network, what we call a G-spot orgasm is actually still a clitoral orgasm. It's all connected, folks. This is why I prefer the term clitoral cluster. It better captures the reality of how this intricate pleasure system actually works. This understanding completely dismantles the old Freudian notion of mature vaginal orgasms versus immature clitoral ones. That's been debunked as a false dichotomy, yet the myth persists. The truth is far more beautiful and complex than these outdated categories suggest. Now that we understand the anatomy, let's talk about what actually defines an orgasm. Forget everything you think you know for a moment and focus on this. An orgasm is defined by the rhythmic contractions of the pelvic floor muscles that encircle the vagina. These contractions occur as a reflex action. The nerves and muscles coordinate without requiring conscious input from the brain. It's like when a doctor taps your knee with a reflex hammer and your leg jerks. That's not your brain deciding to move your leg. It's a reflex. Orgasms work similarly. Here's what's fascinating about the timing. These muscle contractions happen at intervals of approximately 0.8 seconds, one after another. For most women, each subsequent contraction tends to become longer but weaker. The typical range is between 3 to 15 contractions, and the whole experience generally lasts from about 5 to 60 seconds. Now, you might be wondering about Kegel exercises. While voluntarily contracting these pelvic floor muscles doesn't directly induce an orgasm, Many women find that consciously engaging these muscles enhances their level of arousal. Think of it as priming the pump, like warming up your legs before a run or warming up your car on a chilly morning. But here's a statistic that might blow your mind. About 86% of lesbian women report usually or always reaching orgasm during sex, compared to 65% of heterosexual women. This clearly illustrates that a penis is not a prerequisite for fulfilling sexual encounters, nor does it determine female sexual satisfaction. In fact, only about one-third of women can achieve orgasm through penile penetration alone, without any additional stimulation. That means two-thirds of women cannot reach orgasm from unassisted penile penetration. And that's not a defect, it's a characteristic. Yet because of persistent myths about vaginal orgasms, many women mistakenly believe there's something wrong with their sexual response when there absolutely isn't. Now let's address the elephant in the room. 
female ejaculation or squirting. This phenomenon remains largely shrouded in mystery with just a few solid facts known amidst a myriad of hypotheses about the diversity of female sexual responses. First, let's be clear. While women can experience ejaculation, it doesn't mirror the intensity or frequency commonly associated with male ejaculation. This phenomenon tends to be an exception, not the standard. And despite what the adult entertainment industry might suggest, female ejaculation often results in only a small amount of fluid. It doesn't necessarily amplify orgasm quality and may even detract from the overall experience for some women. The fluid itself has some interesting characteristics. When it occurs, it typically doesn't leave any stain or odor once it has dried. The volume varies dramatically. Some women consistently produce small amounts, while others release substantially more. Remarkably, some women can maintain fluid production even through successive ejaculations, with later releases equaling the volume of the initial one. But here's where it gets really interesting. Not all squirting is linked to orgasm. While orgasm involves those rhythmic pelvic floor muscle contractions we discussed, squirting can occur independently. Some women report squirting without experiencing the characteristic muscle contractions of orgasm, while others experience intense orgasms without any fluid release. The triggers for ejaculation vary wildly among women and are heavily influenced by psychological and emotional state. Some women report that identical stimulation techniques may result in ejaculation on one occasion but fail entirely on another. For others, conscious control is impossible, although some can indeed induce it at will. Many women connect ejaculation with a state of deep relaxation, perceiving this as a crucial factor, unlike clitoral orgasms, which often build from existing tension. This relaxation component might explain why some women only discover this capacity later in life, as they become more mentally and physically at ease with their sexuality. One of the most fascinating aspects of female ejaculation is just how differently women experience it, or don't experience it at all. The variation is staggering, and understanding this diversity is crucial for anyone looking to explore their own sexuality or support a partner in exploring theirs. Some women never ejaculate, while others have done so since they first became sexually active. The requirements vary dramatically, too. Some need deep penetration, others respond to oral stimulation, and still others can achieve it through vibrators or even without any physical touch at all. The anatomical differences across the female population likely account for much of this variation. One hypothesis suggests that the variance may be linked to the number of pararathral glands in the urethral sponge, which can range from 30 or more in some women to as few as 5 or 6 in others. It's like having different hardware. Everyone's built a little differently. There's also a theory that correlates G-spot size with ejaculation propensity. The idea is that a larger, more defined G-spot, possibly tied to the number of glands and ducts in the urethral sponge, increases the likelihood of ejaculation. Additionally, the strength of pelvic floor muscles, particularly the pubococcygeus muscle, may play a role, though this isn't universal. Some women describe ejaculating primarily during penetration, especially with deep penetration. Others find that oral sex is their most reliable trigger. Some respond best to vibrators, while others can achieve it through mental arousal alone. The variety is endless, and that's exactly as it should be. There's also the psychological component to consider. Many women initially experience a sensation that feels like they need to urinate when their G-spot area is stimulated. This often precedes ejaculation, but many women halt the process prematurely, fearing an embarrassing accident. Learning to reinterpret this sensation as potentially pleasurable rather than concerning can be a game-changer for some women. Now, for those curious about exploration, let's discuss some practical approaches. But first, a crucial disclaimer. There's no pressure to experience ejaculation, and the absence of it doesn't indicate any problem whatsoever. Sexual exploration should always be about curiosity and pleasure, never about achieving a specific outcome. For those interested in G-spot stimulation, a common technique involves inserting two fingers and curling them upward in a beckoning gesture. This targets the area along the anterior vaginal wall, where increased sensitivity might be found. However, remember that initial sensation of needing to urinate? That's normal, and often precedes ejaculation for those who experience it. One effective way to retrain your response to this sensation involves sitting on a toilet emptying your bladder completely, and then stimulating the area until you feel that urge again. 
Usually, there's no actual need to urinate, and this practice can gradually shift your perception from concern to anticipation of pleasure. For those who experience the clitoral glands as overly sensitive to direct touch due to its high concentration of nerves, there are alternatives. Using a tongue often works well, or placing soft fabric between a vibrator or fingers and the clitoris. The clitoris extends far beyond its visible portion, so using a vibrator with a broader surface area against the vaginal opening might effectively stimulate the internal portions without direct contact. Some women find that positioning plays a crucial role. Certain positions can encourage air into the vaginal canal, and learning to control this, what we might playfully call vaginal turbulence, can, can become part of the experience. By strategically applying pressure during arousal, some women can expel this air quickly, potentially intensifying sensations. The key is understanding that the clitoris offers various avenues for stimulation. Exploring different sizes, positions, and types of stimulation opens up countless possibilities for pleasurable experiences whether they include ejaculation or not. Let's take a moment to address the elephant in the adult entertainment room. Over recent years, an entire industry has flourished around female ejaculation, offering products, techniques, and promises that often don't align with reality. This commercialization has created unrealistic expectations and pressure around what should be a natural, pressure-free aspect of sexuality. The myth of the vaginal orgasm, originally perpetuated by Freud and reinforced by the G-spot concept, has created confusion and frustration for countless women. When women don't experience the intense, gushing ejaculations depicted in pornography, they often feel inadequate or broken. This couldn't be further from the truth. Real female ejaculation, when it occurs, is often quite different from its pornographic representation. The volume is typically much smaller, the experience varies greatly from person to person, and it's not necessarily the earth-shattering experience that media portrayals suggest. For many women, it's simply one of many possible sexual responses. Pleasant when it happens, but not the ultimate goal. The pressure to achieve ejaculation can actually be counterproductive. Sexual response thrives in an environment of relaxation and acceptance, not performance anxiety. When ejaculation becomes a goal to achieve rather than a possible response to enjoy, it often becomes elusive. It's also worth noting that both women and men tend to use nearly identical terminology to describe orgasmic sensations, as suggesting that the fundamental experience of sexual climax has more similarities than differences across genders. This reinforces the idea that sexual response is ultimately about neural pathways and muscle contractions, not about meeting externally imposed expectations. Let's get practical about sexual timing and expectations. According to surveys of sex therapists, the ideal duration for penile penetration during heterosexual intercourse is considered to be between three to seven minutes. Penetration lasting less than one to two minutes is generally seen as too short, while more than 10 minutes is often deemed too lengthy. In reality, heterosexual couples report engaging in an average of 11 to 13 minutes of foreplay and 7 to 8 minutes of intercourse. Interestingly, men typically overestimate the duration of both foreplay and penetration compared to their female partner's reports. Both genders express a desire for longer periods of foreplay and intercourse. This timing information is relevant to our discussion because it highlights how much emphasis is often placed on penetration when the reality is that most women require different types of stimulation to reach orgasm. The focus on penetrative sex duration can overshadow the importance of other forms of stimulation that might be more effective for individual women. When it comes to ejaculation specifically, timing becomes even less relevant. Some women report ejaculating quickly with the right stimulation, while others require extended periods of arousal. Some ejaculate multiple times during a single encounter while others might experience it rarely and unpredictably. The human body's capacity for pleasure is astonishingly diverse. Each woman's experience is as unique as her fingerprint. Some know the power of female ejaculation, while others find joy in different sensations or are still discovering what truly feels good. Yet myths and outdated ideas often cloud our understanding, making us question what's normal. The real insight? There is no one way to experience pleasure. It's about tuning into your own body, exploring without pressure, and embracing the full spectrum of what brings you satisfaction, whether alone or with a partner. Sexuality isn't a checklist to complete, but a journey to honor with curiosity and kindness. As science evolves, so does our understanding of female sexuality. Breaking free from stereotypes, opening doors to new knowledge, 
and celebrating every form of pleasure in its many beautiful variations. Curious to uncover more truths and explore your own unique experience? Download the Scoob app and start your journey of discovery today into the complexities of women's bodies and desires. Head on to App Store and Play Store and dive deep for free.